What's up, Pokey fans? Welcome back to Pokey Teak, and today we're going to be talking about the three best ways to organize your binder. Let's get it done. All right, so here we have my beautiful, wonderful binder that I actually got on Amazon for fairly, fairly cheap. I think it was only like $12, and it's super nice. It, it's super well made. It's not one of those crappy plastic binders. It actually has a lot of um, really good qualities about it. It's not one of those like ring binders that you have to keep putting in sheets, but it comes with some really nice ones. Um, it's overall really well quality, and if you put your cards in some penny sleeves, it goes a long way. So I'll put a picture of where I got it and how much it was on Amazon right here, and uh, and then I just recommend some penny sleeves with this, and then you're you're golden. But seriously, this is one of the best binders that I've ever ever purchased. And if you are on a budget like me, I don't have thousands and thousands of dollars to get these like super nice collectible binders, but these are super well made. They come in different varieties of colors, so I definitely recommend that. The first way that I think is super cool to organize your Pokemon cards is to put all the super nice flashy cards in the front and all your hollow cards in the back. So what, this is currently what this binder looks like right now. So what I'm showing you right here is that I have all of my flashy nice cards like my golden rares, my full arts, um, my rainbow rares and my trainer art galleries. I put them all right here in the front of my binder. So I get to showcase them and when I want to trade with people, they're just all right there in the front. In the back of the binder, I uh, just start putting all the hollows that I want to collect. Like as you can see, this ditto that I pulled the other day, one of my favorites. And then uh, over here, I've got my Charizard that I pulled not too long ago, and then my Mew Reverse, and then I have this uh, Forest Seal Stone that I pulled and I was like, oh cool, okay, but it's actually $13, which actually isn't that bad. Put the cool cards in first. Another way I think that you would be super wise in how you organize your binders is to create art gallery pages of a specific Pokemon. People are gonna be really impressed with what you've done. So I'll show you what that looks like really quick. All right, so here we have an empty page in my binder. And what I'm, what I'm saying is I have these four beautiful Mewtwo cards. And what I would do is that I would put them on display and organize them really nice. So like, I really like this gold, um, Mewtwo card that I pulled with my buddy came in not too long ago and I would I'd want to organize it in a way that it's just Mewtwo so I just leave this page completely for Mewtwo and any cards that I pulled that are Mewtwo and then you just keep organizing it and then you just fill it across until you have all Mewtwo and it looks super super nice. The third way that I think that you should collect Pokemon is doing master sets. Now these are incredibly hard to do, a lot of them. I actually started on, if you look right here, this is my Scarlet and Violet base set, master set that I've been trying to collect. And something that I do to do this, oh I guess I, I guess I should explain what master sets are for those that don't know. So master sets is when you, when you try to collect every single card in that set. Um, so this one is the Scarlet and Violet base set and I'm trying to collect every single card. That means normal cards, hollow cards, reverse hollow cards, trainer art galleries, like everything that's in the set. So as you can see right here, I have a couple sticky notes that I've put on each of these cards that I've been collecting. So if you look, it says N and then R. So the N stands for a normal normal version of that card and the R stands for the reverse of that card. So what I do to keep track is that I'll go online or I'll get um, one of those like ETB uh, trainer uh, booklets that come in the ETBs and I will look at them and uh, I'll just organize my cards and I'll put them in in order and then I will look and I will see, okay, I need, so it looks like I need a Go-Goat. I need one of the uh, forms of Go-Goat and I need the normal and the reverse on this one. But over here I have Skiddo right here and I have the normal card as you can see right here but I still need the reverse. And then this one right here, if it doesn't have anything on it, the Scatterbug, that means that I have the normal and the reverse of that card. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to finish the Scarlet and Violet Master set just because it's so expensive and it's so hard to pull pulls, 
But I did start recently on the Pokemon Go set, and there's not as many cards on that one, so I think I'm going to do that. And just like that, that is the three ways that I think you should organize your Pokemon binders. I think that it's super solid. I think that a lot of people are going to like the way that you organize your binders when you go to trading cons or battles or you go to any card parties. People are going to really respect the way that you collect your cards. If you have any questions or other ways that you think that are really cool on how you should organize your binders, let me know. Um, as always, if you like this video and you watched this far, please give a like and a subscribe on this video. It goes a long way for me. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time.